welcome everybody. Good to see everybody out. And um, I trust everybody else weathered the storm okay. Mm -hmm. uh, was anybody else without power for any length of time? Joyce and Dale, I know you were down for a little mm -hmm. bit, weren't you? From 7 o'clock till 10.30 that night, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's good. All right, let's, um, Joyce, would you open us with a word of prayer, please? And then we'll, sure. we'll dive in here. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, it's just so good to be in your presence tonight, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we all survived the storm. Father, we thank you for your hand upon our lives. We thank you that we have this place to come and study this oh word. God. And so timely, the book of Revelation, Father. I know we're mm -hmm. all getting a lot out of it, Lord. <clears throat> thank Spirit, you, we just welcome you to be here with us. Please give us insight, open our spiritual eyes to see it even further and more, because that's all we desire is to learn more of you. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Um, um, Jamie, mm -hmm. you got your Bible handy? Yeah. Yeah. I knew that. Would you read for me Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, please? And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, these things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. Okay. All right. So we are picking up a question five where we left off last week. And what three reasons does the Lord give for putting an open door before them? which no one can shut. Um, and added after the distribution of the notes is the statement, explain each, which I would be shocked if you guys didn't write out an explanation of what you saw as the reasons. So um, that's kind of a, a given, but in case you didn't, if you give the answer, uh, be prepared to give a little bit of an explanation of, of what that means. What's the first one that's there? Reasons for the Lord putting an open door before them. He is holy. Mm -hmm. Elaine? They had little power. They have a little power, okay. And, and I, thought, I thought that that meant that they were small in number and didn't have a lot of like strength in numbers. Okay. You know, um, the more numbers you have, the more strength you have. And they had a small amount. Okay. So you're looking at it more from a, from a physical standpoint, a, a, a numerical head count. Uh, um, that's, that's certainly a perspective on it. Absolutely. Anybody else? What do you think about a little power? What did he mean by a little power? Anybody? Jamie? I put down the... Uh they were weak they, they were they, like weak in number you know not a whole lot of members okay so you saw it as as a declaration of of weakness as opposed to as opposed to an acknowledgement of having at least some power yeah, yeah. I, okay. I looked at that they were small in number small in number so kind of the yeah. same thing elaine was saying okay mm -hmm. somebody else Kathy. Um, it kind of, they, 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 um, they, they didn't have a, a lot of authority. You know, they were, they didn't have any influence. They were very, um, not regarded, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Anybody else? A little power. Is, is there possibly a positive side to this? Everything I'm hearing is kind of a negative. Is there, is there possibly a positive side to the fact that they have a little power? Well, Dale? Be... well that would make them more reliant on God. Okay. You know, to where it's like they in, in and of themselves are, may be perceived as weak, but with, with God, you know. So, okay, so they were looking to God for some power. Kathy, you put your hand up, I think. You know, I was just thinking this is, you know, that maybe on the same line as Dale, but I was thinking, you know, like, like during the draft, like the football team, like the lower you are on the, you know, like the, the worse you come in the standings, you get the first picks kind of like, you know, 
So that's what I was kind of thinking. You, today. you just you just shocked the daylights out of me that you actually understand anything about football draft. I, I understand that, you know, <laughs> you know, baseball. You know, football. They get the, she thinks football. You hit a home run, or you know, I do um, not. Although or, I don't understand that thirty-minute, two-minute warning. Thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go on, Jamie. You you were going to say something too. Is there a positive side to it? I lost my train of thought, to be honest with you. Sorry. But I wasn't going with it more reliant on God. It will come back to me. Sorry. No, it's, a, you know, that's why I give Kathy blurt privileges so that she can do that. But there's a limited number of people that I can give that to without winding up so deep in being blurted at <laughs> Get to say what I need to say. So. Oh, I know what it was. It was one of those, you know, small but mighty. Okay. You know, because like uh, we have a small band at Stair Rocks, and he says they're small but mighty because they put off of you know a big noise. You would think that they were a bigger group. So okay. Maybe. Okay, small but mighty. All right. At <laughs> hey, Joyce. I wrote down um because I was I didn't look beyond you know, verse seven, since we read seven with it, I put because- Yeah, and I apologize, we should have gone beyond that, but that's, go ahead. Well, I put, um, because of the persecution by the Jews, you know, Jesus, he holds the keys. He is the steward of the door. So therefore it's an open door he put before them because he's the steward and no one can shut it. What's that got to do with little power? <laughs> well, I don't know what where the power comes in. I don't understand that at all, so- Oh. Like from number eight uh, for it. So oh, okay. that's what I put. So that's where I was thinking. Okay. <clears throat> well, what I was, when I looked at this, from my perspective, it seemed like they have a little power. So it, it, it uh, most likely in, in my mind, it was a reference to their dependence upon the power provided by the Holy Spirit. So while it was little, they weren't powerless. They weren't without power. And because of that, God put an open door uh, in front of them. That, that's the way I was looking at it. Dale? I'm looking at, you know, if you have faith to say the size of a mustard seed, which means if, if you have faith, faith uh, even though it may be perceived as small, it is, it is great because faith in and of itself is, you know, you, you, you've, uh, access the, the, the power of, of God. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So the first one we said is a little power. They have a little power. I'll tell you what, why don't we go on and um, let me see here. Why don't we read... Um, Bunny, you have your Bible handy? Unmute. Uh, if, if you're on a laptop, press the space bar. Oh, you're on your cell phone. Never mind. Yeah. No, there you go. I, okay. We hear you now. You have your Bible? Yes, I do. Can you read? Um, let me see here. I apologize, everybody. Usually I do a good review, but with the events of the last couple of days, I kind of got off my game. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just read verse eight, if you would, please. Verse eight? Yes. Okay. Three, three, eight. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Okay, thank you. That mm -hmm. hopefully will bring out a little more clarity. Um, so what is the, the second um, reason that the Lord gives for putting before them an open door? We said, he said, you have a little power and that's why I'm putting a door before you. And we've talked about that a little bit. What uh, What's the second one that's there? And what does what's he talking about? Anybody? Elaine? 
the second one I thought was uh, they have kept his word. And what I thought that meant, they have kept his laws. Okay. And have, uh, and have obeyed him. Okay. All right. Kitty, do you have anything to add? <clears throat> that in the Anybody else? Somebody else? Yeah, I, I think that's. I think that one's pretty straightforward, and I think Elaine, you, you got it right, right there. Um, they followed his word, a reference to their obedience to the word of God, and so because they had a little power and they obeyed his word, he was going to put an open door before them. And what was the third thing that's listed there? The third reason that he put an open door in front of them. They did not deny his name. Okay, they did not deny his name. And and how would you explain that, Bunny? Um, I think that that no matter what was going on, <clears throat> excuse me, um, no matter what was going on, they kept their faith. Um, they they looked up to him. They did everything that they knew that they should, or well, that they, at least they thought that they knew that they should do. Um, I think I'm floundering. <laughs> That's okay. I think, I think, what, but I think what you were saying, personally, I think it ties more into, to number two, but I, I still agree with it. Somebody else, what, what, how would you, um, how do you see, what do you uh, think is, is being pointed to when it says they had not denied his name? Jamie? Well, they were under a lot of uh, pressure from the other Jews in that area and all these other people are there worshiping different gods and stuff. They stayed true to our God. Mm -hmm. They didn't fall into that type of behavior and uh, they didn't deny God. You know, they didn't play Peter. Like they, they held firm to their beliefs and okay. did what they were supposed to. And it's interesting the way you, you started that was they didn't deny him by their actions. Their, mm -hmm. their, their actions remained consistent. They didn't, they didn't say, well, okay, I believe in Jesus, but I'm going to go worship this little demon for a minute kind of a thing. It was, you know, um, yeah. So somebody else, uh, Dale, you put your hand up. Yeah. Um, I have it here uh, in, uh, a note that um, the city sat in a mountain pass which served as a doorway to an Anatolian hill country, okay? And those who are of uh, the synagogue of Satan are probably uh, unbelieving Jews or Judaizers. So it was uh, also in reference possibly to the, the, the physical features of the region. How you mean as far as the open door? Yes. The, the, oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. The okay. Philadelphia was actually a uh, positioned in 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 a uh, a feature that would could be considered a doorway. Okay. Okay. But what about the fact that they had denied his name? How do we? What thoughts do you, does anybody have about that? They had not denied his they name. They had not denied his name. Yeah, they had not denied his name. Um. They weren't I ashamed. Think... So. Good, I, I think that in today's standards, there's so many things that uh, distract us. And yet they were able to keep their focus on God. And as a result, no matter what went on, no matter what better offer there was or something looked really good, <clears throat> they stayed with the Lord and they didn't deny him. Okay. Somebody else? Anybody else thoughts? And and all of that I think is is right in line with what I was looking at. And I said they had not denied his name. They were standing firm, and and I think this is a key here. They were standing mm -hmm. firm um, on Jesus as the only way of salvation, despite, despite. opposition uh, from the world and the Jews. And it. it it's important that that specific aspect of it, in my mind, I think that that specific aspect that they had not denied the fact 
that he was the only way. Um, it's easy to get uh, into uh, a position where we kind of waffle, you know, uh, we've talked about this before. I think we talked about it when we were studying the book of Revelation, how the northern 10 tribes, which later became known as Samaria or the Samaritans, um, got into trouble because they syncretized, they blended um, the, the, the true uh, Jewish faith, the historical Jewish faith with the pagan uh, observations that were around them. And um, it, it, that's an easy thing to do. And um, sometimes when uh, there are there are those who have criticized people who have a Christmas tree or, or um, refer to Easter as Easter instead of Resurrection Sunday. They, you know, there, there's a this segment that gets critical uh, in saying there's a syncretizing taking place. But the, the key thing is the, the people here did not deny that Jesus was the only way. You know, we can we can have a good time at a football game and and not be worshipers of of the Steelers, if I can be that brazen as to make that statement. Or we can we can engage in other things, but not sacrifice, not set aside our our determined conviction that Jesus is the only way and that he's the only answer to this world's ills. You know, there are a lot of people looking to. A lot of this different solutions to the circumstances in our world today in in the United States of America today. And um, it, it's the the conditions are acknowledged by a wide variety of people, uh, depending the de, independent of what their their uh, biblical worldview might be. But as as Christians, these folks did not compromise on their stand that jesus is the only way to eternal life and um there have been in my lifetime i've seen churches that have done that and they they soften that truth and, and in a in a you know, i'll use the word flawed attempt to try to build a bridge you don't build a bridge by knocking out one of the, the primary peerings uh, that'll bring it crashing down. We've got to stand firm on what we believe. And so I believe by not denying him, they stood firm on the on the conviction that he is the only way. He is the son of God. Um, not he was an angel or he was he's he was just a man or he was a great teacher, not m not minimizing it, but but standing firm on the fact that he was is the son of God and he is the only way to eternal life. So. Okay, I'll stop sermonizing and move on. <laughs> um, so we come to, I know them. Um, uh, let me see. I had uh, Mike, can I get you to read Revelation 3, 9, and 10, please? Sure. Revelation, Revelation 3, 9, and 10. Mm -hmm. Okay. 3, 9, and 10. I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say that they are Jews and are not, but are lying. I will make them come and bow down before your feet, and they will learn that I have loved you. Because you have kept my word of patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. Okay, thank you. So in what three ways is this church like the one in Smyrna? If that sounded like a knuckleball based on that reading of text, uh, I hope not. Um, uh, Jamie, what's the first one? Um, I had, they were persecuted from the Jews. Okay. So they were persecuted by the Jews. That's one. Uh, Joyce, what did, what did you have? Well, he refers to the synagogue of Satan that some of the Jews are like people who are from the synagogue of Satan because they lie to the early Jews. Okay. So they were persecuted by those of the synagogue of Satan, which ties in into the same thing you were saying, Jamie, about the Jews. Mm -hmm. What other there there are two others there that are similarities between the church at Smyrna 
in the church here at Philadelphia. Somebody else? Uh, Jamie, go ahead. Uh, God praised them both without rebuking them. Okay. Neither one of them was rebuked. Um, uh, neither Smyrna nor Philadelphia received a rebuke from the Lord. And they are only the only two churches of the seven that fall into that category. Um, they, they were not rebuked. Elaine, what were you going to say? Um, I was going to say that they, the, uh, both churches were going to be protected from a great time of testing. Okay, that, I missed that. Um, so, But both churches were going to be protected from a great time of testing. Thank you. I, I had missed that one. Another one? Uh, Joyce, go ahead. They both will receive crowns if they hold fast. I missed that one too. Okay, that's okay. So there's actually five. <laughs> that's good. Jamie? They both continue to have a presence today. They both continue to have a presence today. Those churches today still have a presence. Okay, I, I was not aware of that. I will take your word for it. Um, yeah. yeah, okay. That's, so that's six. <laughs> There's still one that, that I had that nobody else got yet. What, what were they fighting against? Persecution. No, in fact, they weren't. Persecution wasn't their primary battle. The battles they were they were both fighting was against heresy within the church, mm. not persecution from without. So it was there were distortions of doctrine that were welcome in the church, that were comfortable in the church and not mm. confronted in the church. And um, there was a, a a song that talked about every nation that has fallen has fallen from within. It's not the the external forces that are most destructive to a nation. And in fact, if, if I may um, politicize for just a moment uh, without taking a side or the other, our nation is in great trouble because of the divisiveness that exists in our nation. You know, I listen to Caleb when I'm getting ready in the morning and mm -hmm. they play the Pledge of Allegiance. And just recently, um, you know, you grow up with a Pledge of Allegiance and it just, I don't know about you, but it, it becomes like white noise. You just don't really hear it. But one morning I really heard it and it said, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And we live in a time where that unity is so fractured that I'm very, very concerned about the destruction of our nation from within, not from a, a missile from Russia or China or any other, not that that wouldn't happen, that could happen too, uh, but actually... I'm really going to stick my neck out here. Wasn't there, but, wasn't there a quote, though, by uh, a president in the past that said, if we ever fall, it will, because it will be within our walls? Or is that just how they say capitalism falls? It's always because of themselves. I, I, I don't know where the quote came from, Jamie. I know it was a it was the lyric in a song, and I can hear it in my head, but I can't tell you who sang it. But they, it said, every nation that has fallen has fallen from within. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the, but the, the, the divisiveness in our nation just is, is very, very disconcerting. And what I was going to say was, actually, an external attack, as horrific as that would be, might actually serve to unify the country. Hmm. Well, you can use 911 as an example of yeah. that for Thank a period you. of time. Sure. We were united. It was short lived. Yeah. But people and superficial. To the churches to pray yeah. and we're praying in the streets. And yep. Yep. I mean, we were, Kathy and I, um, everybody knows we've, we, we fall asleep 
and take naps to NCIS on a regular basis. <laughs> You know, it's just, it's a show that we both like. And the amazing thing is after all these years of watching it, uh, <clears throat> we still catch stuff that we missed. But at any rate, they, they, they literally, we just saw an episode. And if you've never seen this episode, uh, I would encourage you to watch it. I don't remember the name of it. We could find it. But in the episode, Christopher Lloyd, everybody remember Christopher Lloyd? He was from Back to the Future. He was Doc. Yeah. <laughs> well, Christopher Lloyd in this episode plays a 95 year old survivor of the attack on uh, the Arizona at Pearl Harbor. And it is extremely powerful. And for an 81 year old actor, I'll tell you what, this man, it, he just, he just crushes the soliloquy that he does in, in that episode. But it, the, the point I'm making is that, that event so solidified this nation and 9-11 did so too i think 9-11 was i think it was on a more superficial level because it didn't last very long world war ii really brought some solidification and unification to the nation and i'm not saying i'm looking for a war i'm looking for the rapture honestly i want yeah. jesus to come forget about the united states of america let's just, you know let's just go on you know um <laughs> unfortunately i can't jump up and make that happen but um so yeah but the division uh you know they they um they were battling against heresy both of these churches and in fact that was the the thing that they were trying to stand against that they needed to stand against and lastly uh and this was the first thing that was brought up was they were con contending with the same group of jews that were identified as the synagogue of the satan a synagogue of satan and um, just let that idle for a minute because we'll dig into it that a little bit deeper. Any any other thoughts there? Any? Yeah, I just wanted to comment. It seems to me that it was China that commented, and this has probably been 50 to 75 years ago, that they didn't have to attack us, that they would destroy us from within. I, it, it might have been. There was a quote, I think it might have been by Lenin, about, you know, give me uh, a generation of children and I'll conquer the nation. I, one of them, it was one of the communist leaders. It might have been Chinese. I don't know. I but, don't know. Um, I, I thought that it was China, but I'm not, it, it may I'm have not been. positive it, on it. I, I yeah. just know that the comment has been made. And at the time, it fell on people thinking, oh, yeah, right. But if right. we look at what's been happening in all those years, it's actually happening. And, and you, I would go ahead. I'm sorry, Bonnie. No, that's okay. When you see, uh, I, you know, I don't like to pick on any specific generation or whatever, but our younger generation seems to be falling within that. They just, they accept anything and everything. They, well, they, and, they accept everything and believe nothing. And, and uh, this generation that's coming up is being poisoned from childhood, from yeah. the, 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 the infection began at the high school level and it's trickled down to where now it's taking place in the grade schools yes. and it, it's bringing about that division and that destructiveness. And yeah. so, all right, let's move on. Um, why were those who were saying, why were those who were saying they were Jews denounced as lying and not truly being Jews. Whew. Does that make sense to anybody the way I read it? <laughs> Did it make sense when you read it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. <clears throat> Why were those who were saying they were Jews denounced as lying and not truly being Jews? It sounded better that time. Why? Anybody? Isn't Why were they denounced? as being Jews, as, as lying and not really being Jews. Somebody. Isn't that because of the fact that as a true Jew, mm -hmm. that you follow the law, you follow what you're supposed to be doing. And it sounds like these people were not doing that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jamie, you shook your head. Yes. Yeah, I agree with her. They were probably participating, you know, 
worshiping the other gods or at least pretending to do so so they fit in and okay probably following god's commandments okay other thoughts dale you're muted if they were truly following not not only the law but uh the, the the word of god and had a relationship of, with god they would not have missed jesus christ as being the messiah okay kathy yeah i was thinking the same thing that um what that that guy was talking about on those videos he said that you know being jews they should have recognized who jesus was that they were not really truly being jews because if they did, they would, they, they should have known who Jesus was. Was. You know? Okay. <laughs> okay. Joyce. That's what I put too. that. Those Jews, I mean, they did, they rejected, you know, Jesus because they had him crucified and they didn't follow. They were actually bitter enemies of Christ followers. You know, the Christians that were called the way back then, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that's why he was saying they weren't truly Jews because like Kathy said, and, you know, that um, they didn't see Christ as Jesus Christ. So they didn't see him as the Messiah that he was. Right. Yeah. Kathy, go ahead. Yeah. I just have a question. How long after Jesus, I mean, these, the church in Philadelphia, is it possible some of them actually uh, saw Jesus and his miracles or the time frame? I don't know where the time frame is, you know. You know, I, I honestly, I don't remember, Kath. I'd have to go back and, and look at the intro to the to the study of the book um, mm -hmm. and see what the, the, the dating is on it. It seems to me it was within the first century. Does that sound right? Uh, 8095 sounds, seems to ring in my head for some reason. Um, if, if somebody wants to jump over to the intro and, and uh, ferret that out, that would be helpful. But um, um, I'll, I'll just pick up with any other any other thoughts while we dig for that particular nugget. Um, I w what I had said was they were Jews by birth only, by birth only, not from their heart. And by that I mean they were biologically Jews. They were descended biologically from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but they were not following the same God that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had followed, they had gotten off the track. Um, uh, in fact, Jesus denounced the religious leaders who were attacking him as being false Jews. So Kathy and, and Joyce, and I think Dale said it, and Jay, actually, everybody I think said it, was not only were these not recognizing Jesus they were out and out attacking him and trying to eliminate him because he was challenging their status quo. And Jesus in, in John chapter eight, verses 42 through 44 says, if I were your father, and if, if you, if you go back and look at the context of this, Jesus um, denounces them saying that um, God was not their father and they protested, you know, thou dost protest too much. And Jesus said, if God were really your father, you would love me, for I came forth from God and am here. At, again, to the support of the things that have been said already, they would have recognized him. And Jesus goes on and says, for I have not even come, I have, for I have not even come on my own, but he, the father, the one that you claim to be your father, sent me. Why do you not understand what I am saying? It is because you cannot listen to my word. You are not a you are of your father, the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. So uh, Jesus here um, points exactly to what you folks have all said that they didn't recognize him as who he was and they denounced him and they denied um, who he was um, and they rejected him. So 
Um, that's why they claim to be Jews, but they weren't really Jews because if they were really Jews, they would have been following Jesus, not fighting against them or trying to destroy him. Um, uh, Mike, go ahead. Uh, uh, Pastor, I have a question. Uh, you had the Jews in the synagogues of Satan there. What about the Judaizers or the, the Jews that accepted Christ, but then they say you have to live according to the law? How do they fit into all of this? Do you know? Well, right in this segment, they I, I, I can't answer it for sure, Mike, but I know we had talked about them when we were in the Book of Romans and how they, they were a, 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 a poison in the church, but, and they were, uh, but they, they actually claimed to be Christians, uh, right. but they were trying to blend Christianity with um, Judaism, and, and their attempt was failed. Um, the other thing that I would point to is Paul made the same kind of identification in the book of Romans. Um, in Romans chapter 2, verses 28 and 29, he says, For he is not a Jew, he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew who is one inwardly. And circumcision is of the heart by the spirit, not by the letter. And his praise is not from people, but from God. So they might have been Jews biologically, genetically. They might have followed the Jewish tradition, even to the point of going through circumcision. And I don't know if bar mitzvah was really a thing at that point or if that's a newer thing. But the idea, they, may have, they might have been religious according to the Jewish tradition, but they weren't really Jews because they weren't following God from their heart. They were following these rote machinations to try to say tick the box okay i'm a jew tick the box i'm a jew tick the box I'm... and they really weren't because their heart was not the way it should have been does that track for everybody Is that comments thoughts Dale, you're going to put your hand up you got uh, i found here that uh john uh was exiled to the island of patmos in uh, ad 95 and so um, Jesus- I remember was, more than I think I do. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, Jesus was, um, uh, let, let's say 30 years old, but we know that John was young. Let's say he was 15. So then that would- No, I don't him, think he was that young. Well, I'm, I'm just saying for discussion purpose, we, we don't know, really. He was but, probably more John. I would say he was probably I, closer to Jesus' age, but still, okay, go ahead. Okay, okay. So then that, that would put him- uh, well, then he would be, what, 95 years old? No, no, he would be in his 60s because Jesus was born. Well, actually, Jesus went into ministry about 33 AD. So, yes. yeah, I guess that would put him in his 90s. Yeah. 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 Ron, what were you going to say? I, I don't know why I've never thought of this before. And maybe, I don't know. I always assumed the churches they were talking about were christian churches but i guess well they were but but we keep talking about the jews and i that's where i get confused i guess because i get that they were all jews there and a lot of them were converting to you know to and stuff but i don't know why i'm all of a sudden having trouble the, the water's a little muddy for you. Yeah. Well, they were they were living among Jews. Right, the, and I the, get that. Yeah, the, the early church was primarily uh, uh, was primarily made up of Jews, but right. so they were um, they tended to still participate in the synagogue when they weren't opposed to the point where they were driven out of the synagogue, and the synagogue is a, is a Jewish construct. It, that's a Jewish place of worship not the church's place of worship. Right. Um, but the saved Jews gathered in the synagogue and they were opposed by the Jews that were in the synagogue who were trying to drive them out. And that, those would be those who would qualify as the synagogue of Satan. Okay. Uh, not that there was a, a synagogue that had Satan over the door, yeah, but no. they, they, were, they were in opposition to Jesus. And so they were, um, you know, the things that we've talked about. Does that clear it up at all? Uh-huh, a little bit. Okay. Kathy? Um, you know, I, I, I always thought that 
that the um that the the early christians really looked as jesus as the fulfillment and so they were like all one big happy family and it would have stayed that way and had they not become so against jesus am i i don't know if i'm making any sense if who had not become so against jesus you mean the the jews, the jews. of the day yeah the jews of the day like did they at one time you know just think oh great now jesus the messiah the, the messiah we have been praying for is here and and so everybody you know should be like all on the same page kind of a thing so there was I, was there a big difference in the church between the christian church and the jewish church or were they the same well no wait, wait wait but you're you're saying christian church and jewish church yeah the the jewish the the jewish community was not a church the jewish community okay. was the, the the synagogue was the place they worshiped okay and the the term church ecclesia means gathering and it, it the, the those who that's what the the, the church was referred to uh, they they were they were they were initially they were jews who came to accept messiah apart from the teachings of the synagogue at the day does that clarify at all or mm. kath yeah yeah it does i mean i i think i understand i i understand does it does it help you i mean yeah yeah i i think and, Go ahead. No, I, I think I think I understand it. I, I like I said, like I, I just if if there wasn't such a, um, you know, like a backlash, I guess, you know, against when they when they no longer allowed the 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 Messianic Jewish Jews to be part of the the synagogue. Um, had they not done that, would we there would there be like only one church? You know, you know, I, I don't know that, that but and that's a, a different facet yeah. of the question that you asked that I wanted to come back to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, was there a time where the church was all in in unity in lockstep, if I can mm -hmm. use that phraseology, mm -hmm. but it sounds like that, which, where everybody was in unity, everybody was on the same page. We were all, you know, we're all saying the same thing. We're all believing the same thing. You know, we're people. <laughs> <laughs> i mean look in this room and how many people in this room actually really look alike mm. i mean if you get down to it there's some similarities <clears throat> but you know we all have eyes we all have yeah. noses some of us have beards a couple of us do um you know but because of our individuality and i, I see your hands Joyce. i'm not ignoring you. i'll get to you um no, no that's um but because of our individuality and that free will that we continue to exercise, you know, we get off on tangents. And I think that started pretty early in the church and where people had their own agendas. I mean, look at my goodness, look at Ananias and Sapphira. They were part of the church. They believed what the church believed, but they saw a chance to make a buck and they jumped at it. You know, that's fallen humanity and sinfulness coming in and affecting things. So um, I don't know how long the church was all in the same beat, um, maybe until Jesus ascended and then it changed. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, I'm sure it wasn't very long. Joyce, what were you going to say? Well, I was saying, Kathy, what she said made me think of, um, well, remember when um, they brought um, or I don't know was, but when Mary went and and then who was it in there that said, oh, my, the woman that, that grabbed the baby and said something, I'm paraphrasing, um, you know, my eyes have beheld, you know, the savior, you know, and then remember her husband, was it? Yeah. And then the one guy said something and then he, well, that was a different guy because it was about his baby. Then he couldn't talk until, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, that was, yeah, that was John the Baptist. That was John father. the Baptist. But, but, no. you know. They back then, like, understood. I mean, when, when you know, she said, my eyes have seen the See, Savior. Now, you know, I can go rest in peace now, you know. <laughs> you, that was you know. Anna. 
and yeah, the daughter of Emmanuel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so she said that right in the and synagogue amongst all kind of people, and they all heard that. And yet, how come she saw and truly believed, but yet they couldn't? And maybe they all did, but then when they, you know, when he grew up and was doing stuff and telling them what they were doing wrong, I think that's when they all, you know, the Pharisees and Sadducees became and corrupt the attitude they did and. Well, and their agenda became challenged and their authority became undermined and their their egos became bruised, um, you know, and all of that comes factoring in. And I, I think that, that that comes back to what I was saying about the humanity, you know, that that free will. We all want to assert our free will. And um, uh, so the, the the divisiveness just is there. It's so. Oh, we chased a little rabbit there. Any other? <laughs> I'm going to get my shotgun in a minute. Go ahead, Dale. Yeah, I'm, I'm reminded of the, the scripture that says that, you know, uh, the um, gospel of Jesus Christ is, is violent. And then the, the, um, it says it, since the days of John the Baptist, we've, you know, experienced violence and stuff. And fr from then on, it's like it's vogue to persecute Christians. But the thing is, is I'm also reminded of the, the, the scripture says that let the tares, you know, grow up amongst the wheat. It is that um, um, abrasiveness of uh, unbelievers that, that has kept the, the, the church strong, you know, to where it's like uh, there, you know, the, the, there's a separation. There's always, been, you know, a, a separation and, and, uh, well, yeah, there, there, there is a distinction or there, there certainly yeah. should be a distinction. But one of the one of the problems, as we've seen here in our discussion of these churches, is the compromise that the church is willing to make sometimes to uh, minimize that separation, often in the name of looking to reach the loss. And sometimes that's an effective strategy, but more often than not, um, backing away from what is the truth is undermines the integrity and uh, really is, is counterproductive so all right let's let's move on here question eight um for the record yes that was rabbit but i think it was a fun one to chase and i think it was there was good exercise involved if i can continue the analogy of chasing a rabbit um is it possible that this same principle could apply to those who claim to be part of the church. Um, support your conclusion biblically. And do you understand the principle I'm looking at here, the concept? Yeah. Anybody that doesn't understand what I'm, is anybody willing to raise their hand? Kathy, you don't understand what I'm talking no, about? No, I don't understand. What do you mean? Um, where there are those who are Jews, okay. who claim to be Jews, but are not really Jews. Is it possible or are there those who claim to be Christians, but are not really Christians? Oh, we're standing in front of, we're standing inside of our glass house, getting ready to throw a stone. Mm -hmm. Is it, is, is this principle, could it possibly apply to those who claim to be part of the church? but really are not part of the church support your conclusion biblically. Anybody? Joyce, you're willing to wait out there. Go ahead. Um, what came to my mind right away was the scripture in Matthew seven. What is it? 15 through 20, where a tree and its fruit, you know, because I mean, I mean, I could say something very controversial, like, you know, the, the rainbow flag hanging outside the church and, you know, and, but unless you are going to that church and you are showing fruit biblically based, you know, because just like we talked about the, the, the Jews who didn't accept Jesus and those Jews that did, and then they became the way, you know, the other Jews didn't realize that we need to follow the scriptures to the fullness and that meant of course including jesus and his teachings because he was <laughs> you know their new law <laughs> their new way of life and they couldn't receive that so that's why i thought right away of the tree and its fruit because unless a person is showing the fruit if they're saying they're christian and there's no fruit mm -hmm. i got a question so there. you're you're saying yes this is possible 
Uh, right. Jamie, were you were you putting your yeah. hand up? Oh, go yeah. ahead. Um, I have to. I, I thought immediately of uh, two Timothy three two lovers of money and self. You know that's a real good example of today, and okay. uh, First John two fifteen love not the world and other things in this world because we're very materialistic. Okay. Okay. Not that there's anything wrong with material things. I, but it's if that becomes our priority, if that becomes what we depend upon, and mm -hmm. we replace Jesus with those things, okay. Mm -hmm. Somebody else, Dale. Uh, Second Timothy, uh, starting uh, verse two: For men shall be lovers of self and uh, covetous. And then let's come down to uh, verse five: Having a form of godliness, but de denying the power thereof. Okay, that's good. That's a good. That's a good good verse to support the principle yeah so I, I, go ahead elaine i was going to say there were a lot of christians today that that believe in god but do not think that jesus christ is the messiah and i supported that with but whoever shall deny me before men i also will deny him before my father in heaven matthew 10 33 okay that's good yeah and the, is there anybody who does not agree that there could be that this principle could Mike, you were going to put your hand. You had your hand up at one point. You were uh, I was, your comment. Yeah, I, I was thinking, well, we have a president who's a, who's a Catholic. But he, he's against or he's for abortion, yet he's a good Catholic. And so and, and Nancy Pelosi, a good Catholic. Yet they're they're fighting and they they want abortion. So, I mean, how can you justify both of that? I just yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Not to mention okay. names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and you're not saying anything out of school. You're not making false accusations no. or or trying to distort anything. You're just stating the facts, and and that's a reality of it. So, um, I, I would say uh, to to any any other thoughts, any other comments. Clearly, we're all in agreement that there is the possibility that there could be those who claim to be part of the church that are not actually part of the church. And and again, I, I said, you know, we're standing in a glass house and throwing stones. You, you know, we got to be careful here um, because just because someone doesn't agree with what we see doesn't mean that we should reject them and say they're not part of the church. Um, we can there are there um there are decisions of conscience that we have the right to make and still be uh christians you know what i mean there and let me just pick on one that that is a is a real hot button topic uh in some some areas that's the use of alcohol i i just recently and again i would commend to you the leadership podcast of a pastor Jeff, Jeff Leak of the Allison Park Church. Excellent, excellent material. Everything that I've heard from him, but talking about alcohol in the church. And um, there was, you know, when I first came into the church, um, if, if, if you had a drink of alcohol, you were going to hell. I mean, that's just the way they viewed it. But is, is that really accurate? Is that really fair to reject people who consider drinking alcohol? as an acceptable behavior is not part of the church. No, it's not. It's not fair. That's a matter of conscience. And there is, there is certainly a clear uh, discussion that could take place there. Um, and I don't want to go too far off on, on, on that particular topic, but I was trying to make the point that just because someone doesn't agree with us completely theologically or doctrinally doesn't mean that they're not part of the church. And who was it that used the fruit? Joyce, was it you talking about fruit? Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, we're, we're not judges, but we are fruit inspectors. And um, so, but Paul seemed to think that there could be those outside of the church or those who claim to be part of the church that are not. In 2 Corinthians 13, uh, verse 5, he says, test yourself to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves 
Or do you not recognize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you fail the test? So you may claim to be a Christian, but is Christ really dwelling in you? Is he really Lord of your life? Are you really walking with him? Or is it just something that you've added to your, um, your bracelet of charms? He's, mm -hmm. I, oh, I have Buddha and I have confusion. And yes, I said that on purpose. And I have, and I have, and I, and I have, oh, Jesus is here. Oh, no, wait a minute. That's not, that doesn't line up, does it? Um, Romans chapter eight, again, continuing with Paul in uh, verses 12 through 14, he says, so then brothers and sisters, we are under obligation, not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you are living according to the flesh, you're going to die. But if, the, but if by the Spirit you're putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. And y'all, I think everybody in this room was there when we went through the being led by the Spirit uh, aspect of, of Romans 8 there. And I'm not saying that, um, that someone who has fleshly uh, tendencies about them or has a, 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 a bad habit in the flesh, all that, that they're condemned and they're not part of the, that's not what I'm saying, mm -hmm. but there is a danger there. If we continue to live according to the flesh, we're walking in the wrong direction and we're moving away. And there's a risk there. Um, so, but the point is someone can claim to be a Christian and not be as what we're looking at here. Uh, continuing on with Paul in the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter 5, uh, verses 16 through 24, he says, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. For the desire of the flesh is against the Spirit, uh, and the Spirit is against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another in order that, to keep you from doing what you want. And isn't that a key to being a Christian? Learning to come to the place where we do what Jesus wants, whether it's what we want or not. That's him being Lord of our lives. And so there are those who claim to be Christians, but insist that they're going to live life their way and ignore what God has to say. Um, but if you are led by the spirit, you're not under the law. Now, the deeds of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, indecent behavior, idolatry, witchcraft, hostility, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these of which I forewarn you. And I know it sounds completely foreign to everybody in this room. Um, at least I'm pretty certain that it does. That there, But embracing any of these things is not something any of us would consider as acceptable as a Christian. Yet there are those who claim to be Christians who are okay with some of these things. And are they then really a Christian? I'm not judging. I'm just asking the question. Uh, does, does it line up with, with, uh, with Scripture? Um, and then he goes on and says, um, uh, envying uh, things of these things of which I forewarn you that just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, there it is. Uh, there's the sharp point, isn't it? Verse 22 says, but the fruit of the spirit, and let me just back up a minute. Fruit isn't produced by effort. It's produced organically. A tree doesn't have to go, mm, I think I'll make an apple. Um, a tree just makes an apple. It just because it is. And as the spirit of God lives in us and moves in us and through us and helps us to to go forward in him, then we will produce the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and against such things there is no law. Now, those who belong to Christ crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So is there anybody in this room that has absolutely crucified every one of their passions and desires and all of their flesh? Uh, no. Let me just let you off the hook. No, <laughs> none of us, nobody. If you think you have, I'm sorry, you're kidding yourself. It's there. Whether you like it or not, it's there. Uh, and I, if, if you're absolutely convinced that you have, then my prayer for you 
is that your growth will take place, that additional growth will take place in you this week as God unearths something in you that really is a little stinky to him that you're perfectly comfortable with. And um, so um, that's a, a big, huge diatribe that ran us over time uh, to answer this question. Uh, and I don't want to to uh, put the cork in it too quickly, um, but is everybody okay with that discussion? Any comments or questions, thoughts? Mm -mm. Does it all make sense? Does it all track biblically? Mm -hmm. Okay, I thank you for the thumbs up, Dale. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that brings us to 732. And remember where we left off because the discussion is going to get um, even a little more interesting, I think, here as we go forward over these next couple of questions and we look at some uh, some things. And yes, we are. Yes. Um, who was it? Who is it that there is a Santa Claus? Yes. What was the little girl's name? What is it? 34th Yes, Virginia. Virginia. Yes, Virginia. Virginia. Yes, Virginia. <laughs> no. We still are in the book of Revelation. We haven't lost our way. Um, all of this is talking about the conditions of the churches. All of this is reflecting on how the church today sometimes still has some of these things to deal with. And we've got to be aware of it. And it's important that we are because we are the church. Amen. Mm -hmm. And for the record, back to our earlier comment, we might be few, but I think there's power among us. And I'm looking for that power to be even released in even greater measure as we go forward here. And oh, uh, you got to tell me my heart goes pitter pat seeing so many heads go like this because mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, all right. Um, Norma, you have been very quiet this evening. Are you trying to be quiet this evening? So Miss Shirley, can I get you to close us in prayer? You're the other one that's often quiet on us. <laughs> Would you close us in prayer, please? Yeah. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the word tonight, Father. Thank you, thank you for all the uh, conversation and the thoughts. Lord. It brought enlightenment to me. I don't thank know you. about anybody else, but it really enlightened me about uh, what it means about uh, you keeping the door open mm. for us, you know, thank and you. not shutting the door, even if we don't have the strength, Father, but as long as we can keep your word and we cannot and not deny you, Lord, thank you, Lord. we will keep the door open for us. Thank you, and I thank you for that, Lord, that you will keep that door open, Father, because we need the door open. We thank need you, to Lord. be able to walk in and walk in your name and praise you for uh, letting us be there and you being there for us. You, and in your name I pray. Amen. 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 Okay, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your week. We will see you Sunday. Good night. Good night. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.